She's our president, and she's going to introduce folks to what this is all about. <clears throat> I know we have some new folks, which we're really excited. It looks like we have a really excellent turnout tonight, and we're always looking for new people. So certainly tell your friends, invite folks to our monthly um, meetings. So I'll turn it over to you, Kelly. Great. Thanks, Reva. Um, as usual, I just want to first thank all of you for participating in our monthly updates. Um, this has been really a fun uh, journey for all of us. We started this uh, roughly about a year and a half ago, I uh, first met Luke at the Cohesive Strategy in Plymouth, Massachusetts in 2019. And we really saw a need for grassroots uh, firefighters to really have a voice at the table for um, advocacy and change um, within our agencies. And so we've spent the last year and a half really working on a number of different issues and really gathering a lot of really good support from people throughout the ranks and all of our uh, different agencies uh, throughout the United States. So I'm super excited to be part of this, uh, this group effort, this team effort. Um, but let me just tell you a little bit about you know, who we are and our mission. Uh, the grassroots wildland firefighters were focused on bringing our diverse group of voices to bear on leadership in the land management agencies and our elected officials at the local, state, and federal levels. Our website has links to facilitate communication with officials, and the organization is actively engaged with members of the House and Senate to find solutions to the following four pillars. So let me just kind of talk about um, the fact that we are a 501c4, um, so we do rely on donations. We're not dues paying whatsoever. If you're interested in, in donating to um, our efforts, uh, you can find a donate button on the Grassroots uh, Wildland Firefighter uh, website. And I think Reba or, or Luke can uh, post that in our chat too. So most folks know how to find us. Um, we're um, on that website. So, um, um, so anyway, so the advocacy part of our efforts is really focused on um, helping the public, the media, the citizens, our elected officials throughout the United States really um, understand really what some of the issues are that we're really faced with in terms of um, wildland firefighters. So we're specifically focused on wildland firefighters, not structural firefighters, but definitely the, the five agencies, U.S. Forest Service, within the Department of Agriculture, uh, Department of Interior includes Bureau of Land Management, National Park Service, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Bureau of Indian Affairs. So that's the, those are the primary agencies that um, we're advocating for. We also have really close relationships with um, um, other, other groups that I'm very, very excited about. We're supporting them and they're supporting us. So our, our uh, premise is, is that we have four, what we call four pillars. And it took us a long time to really think about what the, the goals and, and uh, mission is for what we really want to achieve. Um, and what we've been hearing from the field, you know, hot shots, uh, hand crews, um, uh, engines, hell attack, um, and, and everyone that works in a primary or secondary um, fire position. So we really centered our, we're really focused right now on what's called pillar one, which is wildland firefighter classification series pay and benefits parity. Uh, so over the years, and I do believe that this started probably 15, maybe 18 years ago. I'm not, I'm not even actually sure. I'd have to go back and look at some of the congressional records. But we've been trying to push for not just we, but other uh, folks, um, uh, WF, uh, uh, FWFSA has been pushing this for quite some time as well. So we think we're, we're hoping that we have momentum this year to really um, truly, you know, wrap our, our, our hands around classification uh, pay and benefits parity. So the classification series, we, you know, this is, uh, this has been something, these have been presented to the House and Senate over the years is creating, having um, Office of Personnel Management create a classification series specifically for wildland firefighters. Uh, and what we're really discovering is that over the years, um, as a forestry technician, forestry technician really kind of came to bear, you know, within our organizations right around the early 70s. And maybe some of you that are on tonight can even provide even further information about when you remember hearing about uh, forestry aid uh, or um, um, as the agencies really started 
uh, switching to forestry technicians. So that was literally 50 years ago. So we really feel that you know 2020 has been a tipping point in terms of the large fires that we're dealing with, the the um, the amount of um, um, uh, qualifications and experience that are really required required of firefighters uh, is well exceeds what the forestry technician was really uh, established for in the first place. For some of you that have been working in wildland firefighter uh, as a wildland firefighter for a number of years, you probably you know we've all been in that spot where we've um, we've also uh, been involved in building fences or helping um, crews timber. Uh, but really, you know, where we where we're seeing right now with climate change and excessive field buildup and a tremendous amount of hazardous fields reduction, this really is a year-round job, and the uh, and we really need to really push for that. So, as part of the classification pay and benefits parity, what we are really are looking for is a unique series just for the wildland firefighter, and then pay parity. We are recommending a starting um, pay bump for fifty percent. Now that seems like a lot, but when you think about the amount of time or the amount of money that's spent on hazard pay uh, and overtime, we haven't really done the full analysis on the cost of that. But in order to really kind of think about a starting wage or starting hourly pay for a wildland firefighter's 13.45 an hour, it's actually below minimum wage in a lot of states. And so what we really want to do is take a look and analyze other like and kind fire departments or people that respond to wildland fire fight, wildland fire throughout the throughout the United States and then kind of decide what is parity uh, in terms of a, um, a, a living wage for wildland firefighters as well as being able to look at, you know, how do we uh, really look at the um, um, the opportunity for people to continue to progress through their career. You know, benefits, uh, we're also looking at, um, um, can, can we reinstitute buyback of seasonal time? That's very beneficial for employees that if they can buy back seasonal time, that they can have, uh, they can increase their, their service computation date by being able to buy back service time. So we're, we're looking at that as well. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think of some of the the, uh, the other things from a, a benefit standpoint of view is looking at um, you know break in service and and so we're so right now there's a in this is where this this is where all of you come in is to really help us define what that what that really is um, and so a little bit later we'll be able to pull up a an opening statement on this pillar one, which is which is really important. Pillar two is wildland firefighter comprehensive health and well-being. And we know that there's a number of different issues with Office of Workmen's Compensation and Department of Labor. We've heard from all of you in terms of um, how you've been denied your claims and um, have actually used your own personal insurance. And so we do feel that that's a piece that's missing that, that needs to be addressed. Um, Mental health uh, and um, PTSD, and really recognizing PTSD uh, as a uh, as an occupational uh, injury. Um, so we want to really pursue that. And then there's other uh, um, instances of, of maybe we can think about improving the employee assistance program or EAP for both our temporaries and expanded opportunities for unique and specific uh, healthcare workers that uh, know and understand the unique uh, challenges for wildland firefighters and being able to access that through EAP. Our third pillar is uh, inquiry into developing a federal wildland fire service. We're not putting a lot of effort into this right now. We know that there's a lot of duplication in, in and within the uh, five agencies. I think you'll see that even with today's Red Book uh, or this year's Red Book that there's so many uh, unique qualifications or standards, you know, by the eight for each agency. Um, so at some point, maybe, you know, we look at a federal wildland fire service, you know, agency in terms of standardizing our uh, training and qualifications. And pillar four is land management workforce resilience, resiliency and education initiative. 
And what we really hope for is that in the future that the 21st century um, uh, CCC initiative, that we can really uh, look at how do we put more people in rural areas uh, to work uh, doing hazardous fields reduction as well as paying for education. So right now, again, we're, we're an all volunteer group. Our board is all volunteer. Um, all our subject matter experts are volunteers. So, and all of you are here tonight uh, as volunteers. And we really believe that that's the fundamental um, uh, push for why we're being as successful as we are uh, because of volunteerism and the fact that um, there is no uh, minimum dues that we really want to get the information out um, to everybody far and wide. Um, and that's why we're, we call ourselves grassroots. So we acknowledge that these are complex and multifaceted issues spanning several government agencies. And this will be a long battle as we build on previous work to create a better quality of life for those who sacrifice so much of themselves to protect life communities and, and natural resources. Um, so with that, I'm gonna pass it back to, to Reba. And in the meantime, Reba, I think I'm gonna pull up that opening statement, unless you have it available, I'll have it available a little bit later and we can go over um, that opening statement we can share with folks as well. Great, I don't <laughs> have it for me, I have the agenda, but yeah. Okay, we can I'll, be able to, I'll be able to pull it up. And, and for those of you uh, participating with us tonight, uh, the chat box is open. Um, I, I can't follow it verbatim, but uh, we will have an unrecorded part of our session tonight here after about 45 minutes um, so we can give everybody an opportunity to be very frank and honest with um, um, conversations and, and we really encourage that. But the first 45 minutes of who we are and what we're doing will be recorded and we'll post that on, on our Facebook page. Perfect. All right, thanks. And what Kelly didn't mention is, um, so she, Kelly is the president. Um, her term will be a year uh, through next December. Uh, Luke Mayfield is the vice president. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the executive secretary. We do not have a treasurer at this time, but that is something that's on our to-do list to get, um, to get on the board here pretty quickly. We do have several other folks on the board, some, um, choose to remain anonymous for maybe obvious, maybe not so obvious reasons. Um, but we'll have a good report out from a lot of our folks who are deeply involved and have been putting a lot of the work into uh, this whole effort. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Luke. He's gonna give, start off with a legislative update uh, with some input from one of our other board members. Go ahead, Luke. Yeah, and curious, George, if you're out there and want to jump in, feel free if I'm missing something, but legislative update on my part. Uh, as Kelly mentioned, focus right now is pillar number one. And in regards to pillar one, we have currently come up with an opening statement that I'll share shortly an opening statement, a policy proposal, and then we also added the Feinstein and uh, now Vice President uh, Kamala Harris letter that came out uh, in 2020. Um, that packet has been sent out to one um, Senate, I don't know the proper term without divulging names because we can't, but to one state, two senators to see if they are willing to take the um, proposal and turn it into a draft and carry it forward. If that's not the case, then we are also going roughly three different parallel avenues while giving um, initial folks the time to essentially choose to turn our proposal into a draft and get the ball rolling on main intent, turning proposal into draft. And I will pull up, assuming I'm smart enough to, our opening statement uh, right now, this proposal, all three papers, some folks may have seen over the uh, Forest Service intranet. Um, it was circulated through there. I'm not sure if that has stopped since, um, but I will show you our one pager. And once the, the policy proposal 
once we know what direction we can go, should go, we'll be making that public as well. But for tonight, we'll be sharing the basis um, with this one pager. Stand by. Let's see. Is everybody looking at my screen? Yep, we got it. <clears throat> so the opening statement that we are approaching um, congressional representatives, House and Senate, starting numbers every legislator should know, 1345 hourly wage for a United States Forest Service entry level GS3 wildland firefighter, 137 fire, uh, firefighter fatalities in the past decade nine aviation fatalities in 2020, plus or minus 20% vacancies of the US, of US Forest Service permanent firefighter positions, 30 times the suicide rate firefighters have in comparison to the general public, 30% increased risk of cardiovascular disease and 43% increase of lung cancer. And then a synopsis of who we are and why now, um, just explaining that the grassroots wildland firefighters are formed by active, uh, retired and resigned wildland firefighters that uh, fully recognize the need for a change in the system. Um, the work has changed and the system has not. Uh, so calling for or pointing out that the federal government has failed to keep pace with this dynamic and the ability to take care of the boots on the ground and the people that are sacrificing their families, mental health, uh, et cetera, uh, to do this job at the highest level possible. And it's not the same system that existed in the 90s and prior. So the problem, oh gosh, this is a... Let me pull one more up. This is one we were tying to the 21st Century Conservation Corps Act. Stand by. Ben, uh, smoke jumper, bro, if you have it, you can pull it up real quick. Sorry for the... Uh... Okay. Where's... I got it. Yeah, if you could pull it up, Ben, that'd be sweet. Okay, what are you trying to pull up? Just the opening statement. I had uh, a different version for different intent, rough draft. Sorry, folks. So the problem as defined, and I apologize for that delay, but turning point climate change battle demand on federal wildland firefighters. I think we know that the agency itself has coined the term fire year versus fire season. Um, demands on federal wildland firefighters at the front line year round request. Um, and then pointing out the fact that firefighters are resigning federal positions for any number of uh, jobs inside and outside of the industry. I think the ones that are most well known are folks going to agencies such as Cal Fire um, or any number of municipal and county departments uh, where you're properly classified, properly compensated and taken care of from a comprehensive health um, and well being standpoint with robust peer support programs, mental health professionals, and full recognition that PTSD, anxiety, everything that we know about divorce rate, suicide rate is addressed and properly provided for to the best of their abilities versus nothing official um, and the federal land management agencies relying on nonprofits and volunteerism to get people the help they need. Um, so pointing that stuff out, that is the problem. Wildland firefighter classification. First sentence is stating the problem. Wildland firefighter classified as forestry technicians, range technicians, miscellaneous admin and resource specialists throughout the five agencies. 
um, solution. We need a series that captures the duties, risk, and requirements of uh, federal wildland firefighters. Pay parity, the first bullet statement, beginning firefighter 1345, it's less than uh, multiple, um, you know, uh, Oregon, Washington, starting minimum wage, Costco, McDonald's, et cetera. So pay parity, uh, create a new wildland firefighter pay scale. Our ask is that an increased, increases federal wildland pay by 50% and creates a system that does not put a direct requirement of overtime on hazard pay in order for people to live and make ends meet. 50% um, would roughly put a GS3 starting firefighter at $20 an hour for a specialized firefighter position. Retirement, and we didn't invent this. This has been going on for 30 plus years, probably directly after 1989 when they eliminated um, the federal buyback time of your temp time. But all federal wildland firefighters work as a temporary seasonal before you get a position. I know that I'm preaching to the choir. You can't buy that time back after 1990. I'm, we are not claiming that we invented this uh, advocacy effort or portion of it, but that is one thing that we are advocating for is to reinstate that all creditable firefighter time can be accrued towards retirement. So buyback that existed pre-1989. And then qualifications is a big one that we're still debating. It exists in Australia and is pretty darn successful, uh, which is developing a federal firefighter qualification stipend pay chart to incentivize higher qualifications for regular duty wildland firefighters, uh, collateral duty firefighters, and in incident management team members. So that's the body of our, our policy proposal. The policy proposal will become public information when the time is right and we have the go ahead to essentially do that. Um, but for now, this, this is on our website, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Smoke Jumper Bro, but this is public right now. Again, the three pieces have been circulated through the Forest Service email um, network. Uh, folks have questions, obviously ask. and. At this time, I'll defer to uh, Curious George if he has anything to add or anything that I misspoke on or am full of shit on. <clears throat> nope. Thank you, Luke. Uh, I think that was a pretty pretty good synopsis of where we're at on the legislative side. Just to reiterate for everyone, what you're looking at uh, in what we're calling the opening statement is a piece of paper that we use to brief members of Congress. We need to make sure they understand in a nutshell what it is we're advocating for before we hand them an actual bill proposal. So what you're seeing is a, is a piece of paper that we're using to help kind of break through the noise in uh, legislators' offices and help them see the problem uh, through statistics and have it summarized in those bullet points that you're seeing. The actual bill proposal, as Luke mentioned, we hope to make that public as soon as we can. Uh, it is making the rounds already. We are receiving feedback. Um, but we do need to make sure we follow the order of operations when we're working with members of Congress. We want to make sure that they have a chance to weigh in on the bill proposal, uh, amend it to, to make it more palatable to their, to their objectives, uh, but also make sure that we're meeting our objectives. And so we're in that process right now, and we feel pretty good about it. We're going to see where it goes and uh, keep on working with these various staff members and these various offices and try to get a product. And in the coming weeks, we do hope to, to send out a press release uh, to let folks know what is gonna be in the actual bill proposal. And certainly you guys are our stakeholders. You'll be getting that information first before anybody else. The last thing that I wanted to, to add in there in terms of a congressional update, some of you may or may, may not know about the Bipartisan Legislative Caucus. The Bipartisan uh, Wildfire Caucus is what it's called actually. The Bipartisan Wildfire Caucus is a group of uh, uh, congressmen from Western states that have come together to basically propose pieces of legislation to address various issues in the wild, wild and fire community, and also uh, more so in respect to property and, um, and how to mitigate some of the larger fires that we've been seeing in, in specifically states like Colorado and California. 
we are looking to to get on on the bipartisan wildland fire caucuses radar we want them to know who we are and we want them to be working with us on our issues so we will be sending out a letter to that caucus here shortly explaining who we are and just asking for a seat at the table uh, we are really encouraged to see on the house of representatives side that that there is some attention being paid and that there is an actual organization taking place uh, among members of Congress with uh, uh, sort of manifesting itself in this caucus. It's brand new. We don't know how active they're going to be, but um, we are we are eager to partner with them. So I think that rounds it out probably for the legislative updates. Um, maybe Kelly can tag in any further if she has it. But one thing we have talked about is making sure you guys know about all the pieces of legislation that are coming out, whether they're uh, proposed by us or other members of Congress or other advocacy groups. And so working with Smoke Jumper Bro, we are trying to update our website to make sure uh, you guys have a place to go, uh, sort of one-stop shop to see all the uh, legislation that's out there in this current Congress that uh, may affect you and, and your job. So uh, that's end of update from Curious George on the legislative side. Luke or Kelly, anything to add to tie that one off? I would just kind of add that we are uh, we are actively engaging with uh, House members and Senate members uh, about uh, making sure that you know within the 117th Congress, which started in January, uh, um, we're reaching out to a number of different elected officials um, on both sides. And again, this is. Uh, I want to make it very clear that this is nonpartisan. This is not a Republican issue. This is not a Democrat issue. This is something that both parties can certainly uh, get behind. So we're really excited about you know both sides of the aisle that are interested in working with us uh, and really trying to find out more about what the issues are and how we can really truly push for the needed reforms um, that we've been uh, really pushing for for so many years. Uh, the voice often gets lost when you're working as a federal agent or a federal employee, really trying to make change within the service. And so I think that's why we're gaining so much interest is that we really do have people that, you know, are retired or resigned. Obviously, we have a lot of you here that are still working as federal employees. We know what a tenuous position that you're in. And I think that's why we really felt like the grassroots effort is uh, is really really important. Is that we can we can have that voice for you um, at the table. We do believe that this is uh, you know intergenerational. There's a lot of you that are logging in tonight that are just starting your fire career. There's a lot of us that you know have already retired, uh, and so we really think that again this grassroots effort is really about the wildland firefighter. And, and how we can uh, really, um, you know, push for needed reforms that we've been seeing for a long, long time, and uh, in a way that's very productive and very positive, um, and the changes that really need to be made if we're really to take on, you know, the next, uh, the next, you know, 50 years of wildland fire. So it's exciting. Um, there's uh, again, there's lots of elected officials that are really interested in in what we have to say. Uh, you'll see a lot of um, uh, news articles and um, um, issue, or, uh, topics coming out in the coming days from a number of different um, outlets, news outlets, radio outlets. So, um, you know, keep an eye on, on what we're doing. And we're, again, really excited that we're getting some momentum, you know, behind the public and behind the media and behind and with the um, with the elected officials to really hear us out. So it is ex it's an exciting time, and we're glad that you're uh, you're with us and you're a part of us. And you know we've had we'll probably show you here this in just a minute uh, is our is our website. Um, if you haven't already logged into our website and and um, push the contact us or get involved, it's a great way for for us to uh, know who's really interested in, in helping out. And again, we're all volunteer, um, none of us are get, getting paid. And that, that's where I think the, the power uh, of our group really um, can help us out in this coming year. All right, thanks. Uh, great summary overview, move some really good movement. Um, 
We'll go next to uh, Pete Dutchett. Pete is head of our Pillar 2 subcommittee. And we'll let Pete give an update on, on what's new and what's been happening with that. So take it away, Pete. Great, Dave. Can I get a sound check here first? You're loud and clear. All right, thanks. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Pete Dutchick. I go by Dutch. Um, I know we've got some new faces here. So a uh, little background, uh, been in wildland fire for roughly 19 years, um, working for a variety of modules um, in on the fire side, uh, crew, and in the aviation side as well. So um, as far as what I'm taking on now, I'm currently the acting chair of the Comprehensive Health and Wellbeing Subcommittee underneath uh, the Grassroots Wildland Firefighters. Uh, we've had three meetings uh, thus far uh, that have been extremely productive. Uh, about the, the subcommittee right now, uh, we are taking on uh, three categories. Uh, we're taking on mental health, uh, smoke exposure, and OWCP reform. Now we're trying to prioritize those as best we can um, to fit those into potential bills um, and support some of the other pillars, both pillars one and four right now that are out there. And we're also looking for solutions uh, as, we, as we head a little further down, down the line. So you know, within each topic, uh, in particular mental health and smoke exposure, um, we're trying to raise awareness. So by, by doing that, we're really looking uh, into the data that's already existing right now on smoke exposure uh, and issues that, uh, you know, that our, our fire community has with, with mental health. Um, we're trying to collect uh, narratives, we're trying to get stories and really trying to, to paint the picture. We're working really closely with our comms team right now you know, to try to really get the message out there that, that this is an issue. I, I, you know, we all know this is a huge issue, um, but a lot of the public doesn't. So we're really trying to educate the public in that effort. Uh, the other side to the, you know, the three categories I just described is uh, with awareness, we're also trying to find solutions. So we're, we're reaching out to you know, like, like agencies, other fire departments, um, military, to try to find systems that work, or at least pieces of those systems that work. And, and I think that's a critical piece to it. You know, we've talked about it before, just, just because we get higher wages doesn't mean the mental health uh, issue goes away. However, um, when you don't need to go out for a thousand hours of overtime over 19 seasons just to pay the bills, it certainly alleviates stress um, and creates the potential to have a schedule that's more sustainable. So we think these are all critical pieces. And the other side to that as well is we're also looking to build, you know, the, the support structure, you know, whether that's providing a better education for mental health within the agencies, um, better peer support programs, uh, just maintenance, uh, so that we can check in like, like some of the other fire departments have right now that are extremely successful programs and really looking into the cost of, of what it takes to get to that next level of care. You know, we are not mental health professionals uh, within our agency, but we need to know who to talk to, um, when we reach that point and we need to move on. So we're, we're really trying to find solutions as well as collect data research and um, you know and, and current news articles etc so the the other two things I'll, I'll touch base on you know we had a, a really good discussion this uh, this last week on on Tuesday night we talk a lot about firefighters but what doesn't get talked about all the time um, is our our partners, uh, you know, our, our wives, our husbands. So we're really starting to dive a little deeper into that. We understand, you know, how critical that support structure is, um, but we often don't check in with that side, um, you know, that side of things. So we are diving into that a bit deeper, um, talking about, you know, within the next few months, putting out a survey, um, you know, for, for partners out there. So, you know, when, when, the firefighters leave, you know, what, what are they going through? And we feel that, that their voice really is as critical as ours. And we want to bring them into the conversation as well. So 
So that is on the docket here coming up in the next few months. Uh, keep that on your, on your radar. Uh, the last piece I'll ask for tonight, you know, as we're getting close to, you know, Mental Health Awareness Month in May, um, we really want to, to raise awareness. So with that, we need your help. We need uh, folks that, you know, are interested in telling their story, you know, whether they went through times of struggle uh, with mental health issues, um, whether folks are willing to write op-eds, op give quotes, anything. Um, we're going to need your help on this. And, and I want to make clear, this isn't something where you have to divulge your name. Uh, this can be anonymous as well. And if you would like to reach out to us, please go to the website and uh, the contact us section. We don't want you necessarily to write your narrative in there right now. If you could just put your contact info in there, um, you know, how we can reach you, what category it, it covers, you know, whether that's bad experience with health, OWCP, um, really right now focusing on um, the mental health and smoke exposure piece for some of the bills we have or the proposals we're, we're looking into or bills we're trying to support. And, uh, you know, the hope is that we can reach out to you here in the next two weeks to a month or so. Uh, we'll contact you and get your story and hopefully we can use that whether with a name or anonymous we'd be super grateful so um, thanks to the subcommittee members that have uh, volunteered their time thus far in the three meetings we've had and uh, very grateful to be part of it so uh, thanks very much everyone for showing up and i'll pass it back over to reva and the report thanks dutch yeah it's an awesome group and um really, really um, getting some good ideas. But again, we'd love to have people tell their stories. Um, you know, sometimes when people can make that personal connection and understand how this is affecting us, you know, what we're going through, um, sometimes that's what kind of tips things in our direction. So hopefully some of you out there are willing to do that. We know there's some vulnerability in that. Um, we can keep it anonymous, like Dutch said, we've got some really great, um, forestry technicians who happen to be really good writers that can help, you know, craft those to make them readable. So, so certainly give that a thought and, and reach out to us if you'd like to help with that. Okay, next we'll go to back to Curious George for our communications update. Thank you, Reva, and thanks for the opportunity, everybody on the call to talk to you about our communications program. Uh, if you were on our last call uh, last month, I mentioned that we'd be starting a communications plan and following it uh, beginning in the month of March, March 1st. And I am pleased to report that, that we did do that. We, we did start following a communications plan just the other day. And I think a lot of that, uh, it can be attributed to three people that just joined our comms team. And I just wanna give a special shout out and thanks to the three new volunteers uh, two hot shots, one engine uh, from, I think we've got one from region six, region one and region two, uh, including myself, I'm in region three, uh, all volunteering a lot of their time to making sure the message of grassroots wildland firefighters gets out, uh, both to you guys as stakeholders to understand what we're working on. And then to the traditional media, uh, journalists, newspapers, radio outlets, and also over social media. So there's a lot of work going in behind the, uh, the scenes on this, uh, whether that's uh, editing actual um, uh, uh, pieces of written, uh, written pieces that we've put together that need an actual professional person to make sure our grammar's good, uh, to the website you know, getting updated, to uh, social media posts happening. There's a lot of people that are contributing a lot of time and I just wanna say thank you to those folks. I also want to congratulate uh, this week, uh, Kelly, uh, Luke, Ben, um, uh, Smoke Jumper Bros, another person that was involved uh, for reaching out and speaking to the media, uh, doing actual interviews. So we're firefighters, we're not media professionals, and we sent out our very first press release uh, this past Monday, and we sent it out to about 120 reporters, and it got picked up by four national media outlets, uh, big newspapers. And um, you know the, the folks that are involved in the board here spent their time talking to reporters and, and getting the message out. So I wanted to say thank you as well to you guys. 
So I have a couple updates for you. Um, first and foremost, like I mentioned, we are following a, uh, an actual comms plan now and we are sending out press releases. Those press releases will show up on our website. So you'll be able to go to our website and see what we're sending out to the traditional media. Uh, we'll also make sure if we're getting radio interviews or newspaper prints uh, that we also post those on the website so you can see how we're progressing with our message in the media. Uh, the next thing I wanted to report on is our letter to the editor program is up and running. Uh, one of those volunteers I mentioned is taking the lead on that. A lot of you have reached out already through our website to mention you'd be willing to send a letter to the editor or write an op-ed. Uh, and I, I just want to say thanks for your patience. You know, we are an all volunteer group and there is a lot of traffic coming in through our website. So it takes a minute for folks to get back, uh, back to you. Uh, so thank you if you've reached out, you will be getting uh, uh, a specific contact reaching out to you soon to help work you through the process of writing a letter to the editor, because that is really important to us. Um, and that is really important to getting the story out in the local media, in, in the newspapers, in your hometowns, that's, that's critical. Uh, so thank you on um, those of you that have reached out to write letters to the editor and please know you can go to our website and uh, work through the, the contact form to let us know that you're willing to write a letter to the editor. The next thing I wanted to talk about is what's called a media distribution list or press list. Uh, on our website, we do have a press button now and on the press button uh, is a place for members of the media to go to be able to access some of our content. And when we send out a press release, we need to send it out to as many newspapers, uh, radio stations um, that as we can. And it takes a lot of time to build that press list and we're doing it at a national level. And when you're doing it at a national level, we're talking about mm, 400, 500 pieces of data entry. Right now we're at about 200. So we have 200 reporters on our list, but what I'd like to, to pass to the group right now, what I'd like to ask you guys to do if you're willing to get involved is to go and click on the press button on our actual website and submit through that press button, your local newspaper. Find out how to submit a press release to your local newspaper and send it to us. And we'll make sure anytime we send out our press releases, your local newspaper is getting it and your local newspaper is, is having an opportunity to print our story and make sure folks in your community know what it is we're advocating for. So again, I'll just repeat it. You can go to our website, you could click on the press button, scroll down to the bottom and let us know who is the local reporter in your hometown that needs to get our information to get our, our stories out to your local community. Okay, so lastly, I just wanted to mention that we are also sending letters to elected officials. We're trying to make sure that elected officials are also getting uh, all of our messages and making sure that they know uh, the, the different pillars that we're working on. So like I mentioned before in our legislative update, we are working with the Wildland Fire uh, Bipartisan Caucus to make sure they understand all of our pillars and that they're, they're, they know that we want a seat at the table in Congress and uh, we'll be sending a letter to them uh, this upcoming weekend, making sure that they know who we are and that we'd like to engage with them on policy making when it comes to wildland fire. So those are the updates on the communication side. Um, I hope uh, you guys are starting to notice our presence a little bit more in social media and elsewhere and, and make sure you're doing your part as well. If, if you feel like you have the, the opportunity or the ability, I can see it already in the amount of people that have joined the call today. Uh, but tell a friend, tell somebody on your crew, uh, make sure folks know about this update that we're giving, make sure folks know about our website, make sure that they're getting our emails. Uh, really, we can do everything that we can on social media, we can do everything that we can in traditional media, but you telling your colleague, you telling your coworker about this is going to be what really uh, gets the message out there. So thanks for your time, everybody, and I'll pass it back to Reba. All right. Thanks, Curious George. Um, next, we will go to update on our website and some other things around social media. We'll go to Smoke Jumper Bro. Okay, you guys got my screen? Yep, we can see you. Okay, so we've got some updates on the website, quite a few of them. And uh, I also wanna thank, we've got a, a group of people that's gonna help out with the website moving forward. 
and uh, they're talented and volunteering. So big thanks to them. Um, you're going to see some more updates coming up. Uh, on the homepage here, you can see the link right on top for our one page briefing paper. And I think that's great to click on and yeah, that works. So, and then you're right here. So that'll get you there. There's some new stuff on the legislation tab. We want this website to be a one-stop shop for uh, firefighters to get all the information they need about wildfire related legislation that's being introduced. Uh, so again, our one page briefing paper is on that tab as well as current introduced legislation. And this page is, I just threw it up really quick. It's gonna improve the look of it, but first of all is your first responder fair retire act. And if you just, this link will take you to the bill that's been introduced. And then coming back, it kind of gives an overall quick snapshot of what the bill is and our analysis of it. And then here's the Wildland Firefighter Fair Pay Act, which Feinstein introduced this year. And again, it goes down that. Um, so that is there for everybody to use and we'll continue to update that as new stuff is introduced. Um, coming back to our, our learn page, this is kind of where you know, people's stories, articles about wildfire that we find pertinent to our mission, we post it. So a really great one that just went up is NPR's, uh, you know, story about a mental health crisis in Cal Fire. Um, so interesting contrast with Cal Fire and the Forest Service for mental health. Getting involved, this is where you can contact your senator and representative. Um, so it's just, it's pretty simple. You follow the instructions here and Basically, you grab this, copy and paste it, and you go down and all, and you know, we're targeting the wildfire caucus now. So we added everybody that's on that wildfire caucus, it's noted in here. So, right Ann Kirkpatrick. Oh, so cool. here's Ann Kirkpatrick. Thanks, Kelly. Email her. Fill out all this stuff, and then it's just a copy paste. You know, and and honestly, I would say, you know, make your story yours. You know, add something, add something that differentiates and tell your story. Everybody has a story of why this is important. Um, the connect page also got updated, so we have two forms now, and we're hopefully we'll make that more efficient in the future. But we switched over to Mailchimp, and hopefully, you guys all got the newsletter. That I think we sent two out this week. Um, I apologize, it's just been crazy, but we're gonna start getting more information out to people that sign up for our mail list. But what MailChimp does is it cuts off the, the message part that people are sending. So if you guys have a message to send us, go ahead and, and come back here, fill out your name, your email, and write your message here. And there's no limit on it and it emails directly to our inbox. And I think that was not streamlined before and I apologize. And uh, a lot of the messages people sent to us, they got they got chopped by Mailchimp, and I apologize. Um, and I'll just say, you know, sign yourself up on our contact form, and tell your friends to sign up too. We're going to send out important information that's going to be pertinent to wild wildland firefighters. Um, on our team page, we added Reva Duncan, super awesome. And then another big update is the press kit. So, you know, this is for press typically, but it does kind of give a different perspective, gives people questions to ask. And then it also has a couple of the coverage we've got in NBC News and USA Today. And then here's downloadable logos. And then if you guys like what sent, what, uh, oh man, I'm sorry. What uh, Curious George was saying is if you have press contacts, Email us through here, this, this email address, and that goes into our press account. Um, another exciting update here for everybody is the store. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I, I threw it together in about an hour, but it does. I did order some stickers myself. They're super cool, um, and they're all cut out. And then we have a T-shirt, hmm. and that's it. <laughs> stickers and T-shirt, but if you guys want it, they are awesome. And, you know, if you want to go in a little incognito, you can just get the logo without the without the text, but they're both awesome. 
And also the last thing I'll say is we added an email link up here, which was, I think, difficult to find on our website. And again, that will email us directly so you can get to us um, without going through a mail list and us trying to find you later. But uh, that's it for me. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Smoke Jumper Bro. I think that's great. You know, we've really made uh, huge strides with uh, outreach to wildland firefighters. And some of you have uh, volunteered to help Smoke Jumper Bro with, uh, with our social media. And we're deeply grateful um, that, you know, anybody here that's interested in helping out with social media, uh, we could definitely use your help. So appreciate the, the commitment that you have to getting the word out. And I also want to say, you know, Smoke Jumper Bro's done a really good job of making you guys being able to contact your elected officials about as easy as we can make it for you, right? We, you don't have to hunt down separate websites. You don't have to even look up who your congressional rep is. You know, it's all right there. So please take advantage of that, um, like I said, and, and make sure you get the word out about how to go about and do that. So, those are the highlights of our update for everybody. Um, do we have anything from the board before we stop recording and go to questions, q and A? I don't have anything additional. Luke? Can I add one thing, Reva? Oh, okay, go ahead. And just to tag on to what, what Pete was saying about people's stories, that email link in the, the contact form, that is for people to submit their stories, you know, their narratives, um, like what Pete was asking for. Perfect. Okay, so are we I've good? I've got one, Reva. Go ahead, Luke. I just want to reiterate what Reva said as far as making it as simple as we know how to make it to reach out to uh, elected officials. You know, I spent probably close to 12 years doing this on an independent basis, trying to recruit people to do it on a variety of crews that I was working on. Um, and there was never a platform to bring as many folks together as possible to provide, you know, a unified voice and message from the group and not these little individual shots here and there like so please take advantage of what we're doing obviously put your own spin on it we're not asking you to say exactly what we want but follow the instructions speak up speak out speak often and uh, i appreciate the shit out of it that's all i got Stuff. All right, so if Luke, you want to stop the recording. I think I can do that from my end. Hang on. Okay.